In this video, we're going to go over what mesh count means, when you should use a particular mesh count, and why they come in different colors. All that coming up. Welcome back, Matt with Mikey Designs here. When it comes to selecting the correct mesh count, for the job, you should have a good understanding what each mesh count is really good at achieving. Here we have six different examples of different screens with different mesh counts. In layman's terms, you really kind of want to think of it as the screen door at your grandmother's house where they leave the front door open and you can see right through it. That's what your mesh count really looks like. A lot of bed sheets come with a thread count and the more threads, the softer those sheets will be. You can even look at this conveyor belt and this is a really excellent representation of what screen mesh looks like under a microscope. But let's actually take a look at these screens and you'll be able to see the difference quite clearly. First up, we have a 24 mesh count. And you can see just how coarse and open this mesh is. I always like to do the fingernail test. This is almost like the screen door on your grandmother's house. No offense if y'all are younger and you've got a screen door in front of your house. But these are generally great for doing glitter screen printing. Now, I'm not a big fan of glitter screen printing. However, I've done it in the past. They require a lot of emulsion one of the things you have to keep in mind, the lower the mesh count number, the more emulsion it is going to require to coat that screen. A screen like this here would probably take almost a full scoop coater to coat that screen, take a lot of time to dry, and conversely, it will take a lot of time to expose this screen. Therefore, if you're doing any glitter screen printing, you should adjust your charges accordingly. Next up, we have the good old 110. Let's do the fingernail test. <laughs> it's a very open mesh, lays down a lot of ink. So if you have a client that is looking for a really bright print, let's say a bright white, good coverage, this is a great screen to go to. We tend not to use a whole lot of 110s in our shop because it lays down a lot of ink. It'll use up a lot of consumables like emulsion, screen printing ink. It takes longer to flash, but it does have its purpose. We've been using a 110 to screen print shimmer inks and it's worked quite well for us. A 110 is a favorite go-to for beginner screen printers. The reason being is it's easy to clear white ink through a 110 mesh. However, if you're watching this video, I'd advise to step it up to a 156, maybe even a 195 for your white base. It'll make things flash faster, you'll use less ink, and you'll have a lot smoother, just a softer hand print in general. Next up, we have ourselves 156 mesh screen. This is a step up from the 110. It will hold better to tell. However, we generally use these just for a white underbase. If we're really trying to get a nice bright white with something that has a good amount of detail, this will use up less emulsion and less ink, but it's still fairly on the coarse side or the medium side. We have a free mesh count cheat sheet. I'm going to leave a link down in the description so that way you can download it absolutely for free. And you can use it as a standard operating procedure in your shop. So when it comes to selecting the proper mesh for a job, this will help out greatly. Now we're talking, here is a 195 mesh screen. Ignore the fact that it's got a bunch of stains. We've used this many times. And we'll generally use this for a client that wants any kind of spot color printing, as well as simulated spot process or just simulated process where we need a brighter white and text or any part of the graphic, this works really well. Doesn't eat up too much emulsion, doesn't lay down too much ink. Let's do the fingernail test. And you just hear the difference. A 195 is also great for doing neck tag prints. You could even step it up to a 196 or 200. It just depends on what is available in your area. I would even advise just getting away from those 156 meshes using 195 or 196 to lay down less ink will result in a smoother screen print. If you're on a manual press, it'll take a little more muscle, but all the benefits outweigh using a lower mesh. Less emulsion, less ink, 
less cost, smoother print, happy customers. And my favorite go-to mesh count, the 230. We generally use a 230 mesh for overprint colors. We might use that 195 over there for a white base, and then we'll use a 230 as an overprint color because it allows us to do a lot of wet on wet printing without any issues when it comes to the ink bleeding together and just completely ruining the sharpness of your print. This is also a really great screen mesh for doing simulated process where you have those fine half tones. The 195 works pretty well. However, we can get some pretty great detail with 230. And for the most part, a lot of our jobs are done with the 230 mesh screen. Up next, we have a 305. Ignore the fact that the screen is busted up. We've used this quite a lot. This is a retired screen I just happen to have hanging around, but it is a 305 mesh, and this is great for a simulated process if you're wanting to control gain. It's going to lay down a minimal amount of ink. It will use a minimal amount of emulsion. And what I mean by gain on press is when you're printing, you can have a dot that goes like this to this and a 305 will help with that really well. 305s are also commonly used with CMYK process printing. You could even step it up from a 305 to a 355, but for us in our area, it's easiest just to get a 305 screen mesh. So again, great for simulated process printing where you don't want to lay down as much ink. Let's say you're doing a flesh tone. And it's looking a little on the red side. You could use a 305 to kind of help pull that back. But also, this is great for CMYK process screen printing. Let's talk about mesh color. Why are they two different colors? Why do we have a white? Why do we have a yellow? Looking at these two different examples here, we have a 195 that is white, and we have a 156 that is yellow. But what is the reasoning behind that? White meshes will generally be found in your medium to lower mesh counts. You'll almost never find a white mesh for 230, 200, anything above that. It's generally, they're all going to be yellow. And the reason behind that is, if you think how colors react to UV lights and what your eye is actually seeing, just like our eyes in the UV light, white reflects the most amount of color. Therefore, our eyeballs just perceive it as white. Now with black, it absorbs all the, the spectrum of UV lights, therefore we see it as black. So now when it comes to a white mesh, it's going to reflect those UV lights. Therefore, it's going to spread that UV light around the screen more and it'll expose it faster for one because generally with an open mesh, you're going to use a photopolymer with a white mesh, which exposes really fast and that helps aid with that exposure time, just cutting your exposure times down to a bare minimum because you're trying to get that screen exposed fast, get everything on press and get the job done. Now, when it comes to yellow mesh, Mesh, it's absorbing some of the UV light, so therefore you're gonna get better details. You're gonna have slower exposure times. However, it may or may not be noticeable, but generally with a yellow mesh screen, we're generally using a diazo or dual cure emulsion that is slower exposing by nature and it will help with half tones, help with fine lines, and it gives you a little bit better of a margin of error. When it comes to selecting mesh for a particular LPI, there's a general rule of thumb that I like to go by. <laughs> for example, 45 and multiply that by five. If we take 45 and multiply that by five, we get 225. So for 45 LPI, we would use a 230 mesh screen. And you can use this general rule of thumb. We have that in our cheat sheet down below, and it will help you with your mesh selection when it comes to screen printing simulated process. Something else to consider is on your screen, you'll generally have a number. In this case, it's a 156. The screen doesn't have that number after it, but there are screens that have a different 
different thread diameter and that would be followed by the 156 and then it would give you your diameter. And it's exactly what it sounds like. The smaller the number, the smaller the diameter of the thread will be. The larger the number, the larger the thread will be. This is just kind of an example that's over exaggerated using some twine and embroidery thread. One of the benefits to using a smaller thread is it allows your ink to just clear the screen a lot easier, therefore giving you brighter prints. Because the thread is smaller, some of your really small halftone dots, it might be a little more difficult for it to hang on. Therefore, you might lose some in the, the five to 8% range. It's a little bit of a, a give and take. I hope that tutorial on screen mesh count as well as colors was really helpful for you. Don't forget to download our free mesh count cheat sheet. Post it up in your shop. I hope it really helps out. And until next time, we'll see you in the next video.